If you would please grab your food, grab a table, make a new Toastmaster friend if you haven't already, because you know how we Toastmasters, we don't like to talk, so please make a new Toastmaster friend. Let's not let it be like high school or college where you kind of hang around with the same folks. All Toastmasters are friendly, we know that, so make a new Toastmaster friend this evening. If you haven't gone to the raffle table, see our raffle master, Diane. She's right... Yeah, okay, after you finish eating. So we are going to get the program started. I'm going to ask our Sergeant Arms to come up and get the meeting going this evening. So Bob, if you'd please come up. Toastmasters, honored guests, and the rest of you all. <laughs> Would you believe 60 years? Wow. Yeah. 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 I can't believe it. The food is great, people are great, and welcome to Mount Prospect Toastmasters 1500 Club. The friendliest club, where's the friendliest club? In Chicago. Dick won't let us be the universe. Dick won't let us be in the universe. So, so I have my instructions uh, at this point. I have to introduce our fellow uh, Toastmaster of Ceremonies, Jerry. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Welcome to the 60th anniversary of Mount Prospect Toastmasters. It's hard to believe that this club started in 1954. We're going to take a little walk down memory lane and share some, some memories about the club with you. And a lot of you in this room this evening have been part of the district for a long, long time. And we're going to acknowledge some of those folks. But before we get into the formal program, I would like to announce all of our dignitaries tonight. Since we have so many, I'm going to actually ask that all of our past district governors please stand and be acknowledged. All of our past district governors. So if you just remain standing just for a moment. So instead of me saying when they were district governors, we're just going to quickly go around the room and I'll start on this side with Mike Burnham. If Mike, if you just let everyone know what year you were District Governor? Uh, Mike Burnham, 19... <laughs> 1989. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Michael Lee? Michael Lee Sawatsky. It was Jacket at the time, and it was 93 94. Okay. Mr. Brooks? Charles Brooks, 2003 2004. Okay. Carol? Carolyn Arthur, 2007-2008. Yes! Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Get a little excited. Dick Storr, 1971-72. Deep Mark. Deep Mark, I can connect. 2004-2005. All right. And that gentleman back there. She was signing in 2011-2012. Joan? Joan Moore, 2012-2013. Bob? Bob Roman, 1987-88. Yeah. Oh, wow. Keith Essex, 1988-89. Bruce? Bruce Burrow, 2005-2006. Give everyone a hand. All right. I don't know what all the numbers add up to, but collectively, I'm sure it's probably much older than the club are if we added up all those numbers. And we actually have several international directors with this evening, Deep Bar being one of them, international director, and then also Dick. And then Deep Bar was also our region advisor for Region 5, for those of you who don't know. I thought about putting up all the charts for the regions and for the districts, but sometimes that gets a little confusing for folks, so we won't do that this evening. But now I would like to ask all of our division governors who are present this evening to please stand. All of our division governors. Southwest. The Southwest Division. Mr. Bruce Lee. Southwest. 
Plinko, Northeast Division. Okay. And all of our area governors who are here this evening. Northwest Division, Area 6, this area. Okay, Ivory. Ivory Glantz, Area C, 27, Central North. Okay, great. Kathy? Yeah, the Northeast Division, uh, Area 62. Okay. Silvana? Silvana, Northwest Area 2. Okay. Kevin? Kevin Chapman, Area 63, over there. Okay. <laughs> Now, because I started backwards with this, if you noticed, I didn't announce the current trio. So I would like our current district governor, Michelle Cable, to please stand. Our lieutenant governor of education and training, Donna Weston. Outstanding. Have I missed anyone? Immediate past. Beg your pardon? Immediate past district governor. Immediate past, this is Governor Joan Moore. Have I missed anyone else? Okay. So now I'd like to call our Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training to come up and lead us in the invocation and also the pledge. Donna? opportunity to gather together as Toastmasters and friends to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the Mount Prospect Toastmasters Club, the friendliest club in Chicago. Please bless the members of the Mount Prospect Club as well as the many Toastmasters friends that are here with us tonight to help celebrate. Help our club continue to grow so we can continue to help men and women gain confidence in public speaking, acquire valuable leadership skills, and along the way, form long-lasting friendships. Please look with favor on the efforts of the Mount Prospect Toastmasters Club. Rejuvenate present members for greater service in the years to come. Provide the club's new members with energy and enthusiasm to help carry the load and devise innovative ways to retain current members, attract new members, and meet our members' needs. Bless the leaders of this club and let them go forward with vigor and purpose to serve even better. We give thanks for the many great leaders that have played a part in the success of this club. Members such as Dick Storm and Bob Roman, countless others. They have provided inspiration and leadership to help the club grow into the strong club we are today. We also want to remember all of the members that have belonged to the Mount Prospect Club. They each played a part in shaping the club into the friendliest club in Chicago, a place that truly changes a person's life. Please bless everyone attending tonight and grant them all a safe journey home after the celebration. Amen. 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 So please all stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Doug. What celebration and anniversary wouldn't be befitting if we didn't start it with a little bit of humor and comedy? So let's welcome past district governor, and distinguished Toastmaster, Bob Roman, to share a little levity with us. Bob. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, uh, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, dignitaries, and guests. Two guys, a young guy and an old guy, like me, were shopping at Walmart. And they were looking for this cheesecake. I'm going to improvise a little bit. 
that uh, a Toastmaster makes that's just out of this world. And they couldn't find it. But let's get back to the story. As they're going through the store, the carts collide. And the old guy says, I'm so sorry, I, I didn't see, I wasn't looking for you, my, you see my wife, I can't find her. And the young guy says, you know, what a coincidence, I can't find my wife either. So the, young guy, the older guy says, well, what's she look like? So the young guy says, well, she's 27 years old, 5'4", blonde hair, blue eyes, buxom, and she's wearing short shorts. So the young guy says, what does your wife look like? And he goes, never mind, let's look for yours. <laughs> Uh, you're going to have a chance to bid on, or I should say, buy a raffle ticket for his hook that he used in his humor speech contest when he won the district. So now I'm going to call up Jeff Chadwick. Jeff is a past president of Mount Prospect Toastmasters, and he's going to share a brief little walk down memory lane with you. But before we do that, Jeff, if you get that center light. Um, I'm sorry, but it's going to be the right one instead. We have a special guest that couldn't be with us this evening, but instead he decided that he's going to share a little video with us. Some of you may recognize him, and if you're not familiar with him, I'm sure that after watching it, you soon will be. It's a short three-minute video.
I hope to see many thousands more given the advantage of this training in the years to come. How many of you have ever seen that video before? <clears throat> Just a few of you. That's archive footage, and it goes back to, I'm not exactly sure, Dimar, but I think 1950 something? No, I'm not sure. Because I really had to search to, to find that, and I'm glad that I was able to do that. So now, if we could turn the lights back up. So now let's welcome. Jeff Chadwick, and he's going to take us for a brief walk through memory lane with Mount Prospect Toastmasters. Jeff. All right, thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, welcome guests and dignitaries. Appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak with you tonight. As Jerry mentioned, I am a Toastmaster of Mount Prospect. My first meeting was in the fall of 2004. I remember it distinctly. Marguerite O'Connor was a member of the club at the time. And it, it, was, it was a good group. It was a relatively small group, I, I recall at the time. The only goal I had at the time walking through the door that, that first evening was to be able to get up in front of a group of people and speak and, and, and not have a panic attack. So it was a relatively modest goal at the time. But, uh, you know, I learned that clubs go through peaks and valleys and, and Mount Prospect over the first couple years of, of my uh, membership there was, was kind of going through a valley, and which was fine with me because speaking in front of a smaller audience was a good way to transition into Toastmasters, so I didn't complain about that. But district leadership, I think, saw an opportunity. They saw potential in the club, and they saw an opportunity that the club could be more than what it was. And so there were a handful of district leaders and, and, and members of other clubs that, that stepped in. Dick Storer was one of them. Bob Roman was another. And not only wanted to get the club back on its feet, but wanted it to reach its full potential. And they saw the potential in the club, and I remember having a conversation with Dick at the time, and he said, you know, we're going to get back to the basics. We're going to start doing the little things right over and over and over again. We're going to focus on getting a, a full agenda, and we're going to focus on a club operations guide where everybody knows what they're, they're trying to do, and we're going to focus on membership building and membership drives. And so that's what we did. You know, with, with a group of people that were committed and dedicated to Mount Prospect Toastmasters, we were able to, to build the club back to, to what it is today. We have over 25 active members today, and it's a group that is focused on people and Toastmaster development. That, that's the one thing that, that has carried on throughout the years through the, the peaks and the valleys of the club, has been a core group of people that want to develop Toastmasters. They want to develop leaders within the community that are focused on communication skills and leadership skills. And it, it's really been a pleasure to be a part of this and to have a front row seat as, as watching this club develop over the last 10 years. Um, you know, it's, it's been about the members, and I've learned from all the members that have come and gone over the years, and, 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 and I'm really proud to be able to stand up here tonight and, and say that I've been a member since 2004 and look to be a member for many more years to come. So I appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak with you tonight. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jeff. Keith Essex is the district historian. And when I was looking at the history of the club and trying to figure out a timeline of when the club first started and then where we're at now in 2014, in a few minutes I'll show you uh, some slides and it's going to take us a walk through the decades. So that means 50s all the way through the 2000s. I think you'll find some of that interesting. 
But just some trivia in terms of at the club, and it's not really trivia. The club originally started May 3rd, 1954, and it started Central School in Mount Prospect, which is now the Mount Prospect Library. And in fact, Virginia Bosserman, her dad, they live literally almost across the street from Central School. And she told me that her father was actually a member of Mount Prospect Toastmasters. So they started in Central School, and they were there for uh, a number of years. Actually, let me back up. They started, they were also at uh, J. Ross Engineering Building, 320 South School Street for three years. They were at Mount Prospect High School for one year. Ranter's Shopping Center, they met there for one year. Mount Prospect Country Club, we met there for 25 years. And the Mark, the Mark, the Mount Prospect District Community Center for six years. South Church, which I know Marguerite, for 16 years. And our current location, our club, for seven years. So from meeting at Central School in 1954 to fast forwarding 60 years later to First United Methodist Church in seven years. Keith also shared with me that in terms of a distinguished club streak, Mount Prospect was distinguished for five consecutive years. We had various winners in the different speech contests, the humorous speech contest going back to 19... Keith has it 1793, but I don't think the <laughs> Toastmaster was that old. Neil Rowe, 1966 International Speech Contest, Bob Luster. 2000 International Speech Contest, yours truly, and the District Humorous Speech Contest winner, Mr. Bob Roman. Mm -hmm. Those of you who remember his hook speech, I'm sure, where he had a chance after 20 years to respond to his significant other. Okay. In terms of leadership, we've had various area governor of the year, myself, Neil Rowe, Bob Roman, which I'll get back to in a few minutes, Steve Goodwin, back in 1970. So there are a lot of distinguished awards that the club won. And I'm not going to share all these with you, but Keith gave me a whole list of different awards that the club has achieved in terms of educational awards, and those are many, many, many. But what I really wanted to talk about or share with you is this, and I had to pull this information because I, I thought this was really interesting for all of us. How many of you know how many clubs in the district are over 60 years old? Anybody, take a guess. Yeah. Five. Jeff has it right on the head. There are 12 clubs in the district that are 60 years or older. Michelle's club, actually, Long Grove Lake Zurich, is the oldest club in the district, 74 years old. And then clubs underneath that fall in, for example, Speakers Forum Club, 68 years, North Suburban, 66, Niles Township to celebrate their 66, Park Ridge, 65 years old. And West Suburban, 63. Arlington Heights Club is 62 years old. Homewood Flossmoor Toastmasters is 60. And then there are four other clubs, of which Mount Prospect falls in the middle of that, 60 years plus. So 12 clubs in the district that are 60 years or older. More than six and seven decades. Can you imagine that? So that shows you how many folks it took for those clubs to survive for that length of time. Marguerite also shared a letter with me, and this was from Paul Runkin, Paul, I'm sorry, Paul Runkel, uh, Chairman 2000-2001 Nominating Committee, and he was talking about in this letter about Mount Prospect and how coming to the club he always felt that it was uplifting, and he said that he compared it with years later, or, or hours later rather, where he didn't really want to get out and he didn't want to go to the club, and I know we've never felt like that, right? We always want to go to a monk, we want to go to a Toastmasters meeting. But he said that always when he went to a Toastmasters meeting, that he always felt better no matter what the day brought after he left the meeting than before he left or before he walked into the meeting. And I'm sure most of us in this room this evening can attest to that, right? Right. Yes. It doesn't matter what's going on on the outside, but once we come into a Toastmaster meeting, we get uplifted, we hear different stories. 
We hear jokes, we hear humor, uh, table topics, and for those clubs that have 30 second go around, like Palatine <coughs> and some of the other clubs, it really makes it interesting because I think that's what keeps people in it for so long. Because once we make a commitment to it and we dedicate ourselves, and I love what Helen Blanchard said, and I think it, she really summed it up. She says, when you get all there is to get out of Toastmasters, you will never get out of Toastmasters. <laughs> and we have a lot of folks in the room this evening, for example, Dick <coughs> Storer, who's been a Toastmaster for 54 years. 54 years. Bob Roman has been a Toastmaster for 34 years. And there's various other experienced Toastmasters. Charles Brooks has been a Toastmaster for 19 years. Keith, how many now? 34. 34. Mike, how many? All the same. So again, that's just amazing to me how long people remain in this organization because of the value that it brings. I'll share a little bit more with you as the rest of the evening goes on, but right now we're in for some real entertainment. And I'm proud to say that he is a member of Mount Prospect Toastmasters. Let me get my sheet. And actually, he hasn't been a member of Mount Prospect Toastmasters that long. He's only been a member for 15 months. But Jeff is the kind of guy, as soon as he walked into the club and he decided that he wanted to make a commitment and dedicate himself to Toastmasters, he jumped on that educational horse really quick. In 15 months, he received his CC last August. He also received his CL Award two weeks ago. And he's now five speeches away from completing his ACB, which he plans on completing by the end of June. Just three weeks ago, Jeff launched his first book, and it's called Thought Provoking Quotes, and he'll share that with you a little bit later on. One hundred of his favorite quotes that he's either heard, read, or have said. Jeff is a professional magician, not musician, magician by trade, and he's known as America's sports magician. He performs for Fortune 500 companies, professional sports teams, athletes, and owners. Jeff has decided to expand his magic career into corporate speaking, where he speaks on creative problem solving. Ladies and gentlemen, my fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, please help me welcome to the left to the lectern, Mr. Jeff Scanlon. country that actually does magic that is combined with sports props and things. Now as a magician, I am one of the only people on this planet that can come out here and lie to each and every one of you, <laughs> and normally get paid for it as well. <laughs> but as a magician, I have studied the art of lying. 
And I believe that I've gotten pretty good at the game to know when someone is lying to me. Mm -hmm. And tonight, in just a moment, we are going to find out. So I'm going to have several of you. In fact, we will start off with... What did you pull? Kevin? Kevin? Yeah. Please stand up. Kevin, want to come and join me? Uh, Jack, want to come join? Let's see. Deborah, you want to come join me too? Do you want to come on? Come on up. And Ethan, come on. Come on up here, guys. I mean, it's tiny. Kevin, do you want to take a look at that? Make sure there's no mirrors, trapdoors, secret compartments. It is just an ordinary brown little paper mat. Yes? It is. Excellent. Would you place the balls inside of the bag? All of them? All of them. Maybe one at a time, whatever you like. Okay? You see, in a moment, each one of you are going to reach into the bag and remove one ball. Do not look at the ball until I say it. Reach inside and do not look. So make sure you have a fist around the ball so you don't know. Eden? You can do it that way if you want. <laughs> Jack? <laughs> now, each one of you is holding a baseball in your hand. Please very carefully bring it up to your face. Do not let anyone next to you see what color you have, just to make sure you now know what color ball you are holding. Done that so far? Excellent. It is now my job to see about trying to eliminate who is lying and who is not. <laughs> so we are going to start off by asking each of you to simply say, I do not have the black ball. I do not have the black ball. I do not have a black ball. I do not have the black ball. I do not have the black ball. I do not have the black ball. Mm, pretty good. Pretty good. There is one thing that we do know, don't we? One of them is lying. <laughs> so this time, let's change it around. This time, say, I have the black ball. 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 <laughs> you guys picking up on anything here? You starting to think of who you might think has the black ball? I say we take a little vote. How many think that she has the black ball? How about with the round little box? <laughs> yeah. Okay. How about Eden? Jack? Deborah? Kevin? We've got two or three that are very, very close. <laughs> See, I have Eden, Jack, and Kevin. So how many think that Eden has the black ball? Okay. Jack? Here Kevin? Okay, so it looks like, according to your clause, that the majority of you think 
that Jack has the black ball. So my question to you, Jack, is how does it feel to be known as a chronological liar? Pathological mm. liar. <laughs> you know what's very interesting? I don't either. You're not a liar. In fact, I believe strongly that you do not have the black ball. Can you please hold your hand out in front of you? Open it up and show that you do not have the black ball. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nicely done. Give him a hand. <laughs> now we're down to four. Now one of the things that's great about being a magician is that you do learn about how people, what they do, their assumptions that they make, their voices, their quivers, their eyes. All those little things. It's like a human lie detector. In fact, these two over here. <laughs> see, when you said, I do not have the black ball, I watched your bottom lip oh. and it quivered. Oh. Your voice started breaking a little bit. In fact, the second time, you couldn't even say it properly. Which means that I very seriously believe that neither one of you have the black ball. Would you open your hands and show everyone that you don't have the black ball? <sighs> Perfect. Thank you both very, very much. Give me my hand. Well, now that means that we are down to ten. I forgot this. Should have written this down earlier. But this now means that it's just down to you two, Deborah and Kevin. You guys set? Yes? Excellent. One more quick time. Say, I have the black ball. I have the black ball. Kevin? I have the black ball. Thank you. Just proved my point. Of you two, Deborah, you tried, almost got it, but I believe you have a white ball. Would you hold out your hand? And show that you do indeed have the white ball, which of course means, and thank you very much, that Kevin, if you open up your hand and show that you indeed do have the black ball, no. that would be perfect. Yes, uh, you do indeed have the black ball, which is why I actually said Kevin has the black ball. Wow. That was for you. Thank you very much. a thought from me is going to require you to have a good imagination and you look like you have a good one. <laughs> Hold out your right hand. A bicycle deck of playing cards gets placed right there. Now Stacy, I want you to imagine that I could reach into this <coughs> deck and I could remove all the cards of one color. In your imagination, did I just remove the red cards or the black ones? Black. Absolutely correct. <laughs> Nicely done. So now in your imagination, you are holding all the black cards. There are two suits, spades and clubs. Stacy, I will be sending you one of those suits in just a second. Are you ready? Right about now. You should have received, what did you get, spades or clubs? Clubs. Perfect. Nicely done. So now in your imagination, you have all the black club cards. 
in the box. Now, there are 13 different cards for you to choose from, so I am going to speed this up. We're going to eliminate half of the clubs. When I snap my fingers, you simply say high or low. Are you ready? When I snap my fingers, <laughs> I, I think I'm speaking. I'm not sure. When I snap my fingers, you simply say hi or now you're saying how. Oh, let me get ready. No. You want to say hi, we will eliminate hi. That means that the low clubs, that's the ace, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. The lower half. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, and seven of clubs. In a moment, I will send you mentally one of those low club cards, and because you have done so well already, you will get the right card that I send you. In fact, you know, Tiffany, I came this close to having you help out. There's only one reason why I didn't. Not that you're not a nice person, but here's what I want to have happen. When I send the card mentally to Stacy, see what card you pick up. You're going to find you're going to get the wrong card. Okay? That's the only reason why I chose Stacy for this. Stacy, here we go. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven of clubs. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right about now. You should have received one card. What did you get? Three. Tiffany, what did you get? Five. See? Wrong card. That's why I chose Stacy for this. <laughs> now, I just, I just have to go with what I'm telling you. Look, you said the three of clubs. If we were to open and find the three of clubs in the deck, there it is. Hold out your hand one more time. Now, this is a very important question for you, Stacy. Is the three of clubs, is that your favorite card, or to you, is that just another card in the deck? It's just another card in the deck. I knew that. <laughs> you don't believe. You see, what I can tell you is the Three of Clubs is not only my favorite card, that is the card that I've been sending you mentally this entire time. And Stacy, I have to say that of all the cards in the deck, you got the right one. Congratulations! <laughs> and you and everyone else here is not buying a word of this. I won't prove it, though. You see, the Three of Clubs, my favorite card, the one I've been sending you mentally the entire time, has a blue back. Check it out. <laughs> Not bad, see? <laughs> One small thing I forgot to mention. Stacy, the three of clubs, the card that you chose that I've been sending you mentally the entire time, does have a blue back. What I forgot to mention <coughs> was that every other card in the deck happens to have a red back. Wow. And I would like to thank you very much for picking up on my thought. In fact, you can even check that out. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you, Jeff. Did you enjoy that? <laughs> some more Mount Prospect history. We are going to now move to our keynote speaker this evening. Some of you in the district already know him, but let me give you a little background on the Jedi. Mr. Mixon is a graduate gemologist, a storyteller for the Chicago Public School System, and most of all, and what he's most proud of, is that he's a distinguished Toastmaster. He's also considered to be a master storyteller and also a champion speaker. In 2009, he was the runner-up District 30 champion in Toastmasters International Speech Contest. And then in November of 2011, Mr. Mixon won the District 30's Evaluation Contest. And even further, he continued on in April 21st, 2012, when Barry won the championships in both. Ready for this? Some of you may remember table topics and evaluation contest. Those combined victories make Mr. Mixon the first and only person in the history of District 30 
to have ever won three championships in the same Toastmaster year. All right. Wow. Is that awesome or what? Yeah. And I was elated that he won, except that I didn't. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> A number of us in here are. But Barry went on to represent District 30, and he competed in the 2012 Toastmaster International World Championship of Public Speaking, where he competed in the semifinals. And a number of us had the privilege of going there and watching Barry compete. Now Barry has decided to join Toastmasters on Purpose, top as we call it, and he's known throughout the district, as I said a minute ago, as simply the Jedi. In his professional life, Barry is the owner of the Jim Hunter Gemological and Educational Storytelling Incorporated, and his life's purpose, and I've witnessed, witnessed this firsthand, is to use art, science, history, and magic of gemstones and precious metals to help children, adults, small businesses, and corporations discover the value of their own stories. Ladies and gentlemen, my fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests, please help me welcome to the lectern distinguished Toastmaster Barry Mixon creating your symphony, Mr. Barry Mixon. Toastmaster, on and off, for five years, five months, and six days. And to have the opportunity, the honor, to speak at the Mount Prospect Toastmasters Club, number 1500, is truly a dream come true. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and distinguished guests, 60 Years. When Jerry first asked me to speak here, in this place, my first reaction was, wow, are you serious? Mm -hmm. Being asked to speak at the Mount Prospect Toastmasters Club is like being asked to perform, to play music at Carnegie Hall. <laughs> Sixty years. Now, we just heard a wonderful presentation explaining how many people have come through those doors. So I'm not here to talk about that. We heard how many of those people went on to become leaders, district governors, division governors, area governors. So I'm not here to talk about that. We were inspired to hear how many of those people went on to take the things that they've learned here and went off into the world and did great things in their communities, in their homes, in their businesses. So I'm not here to talk about how many people came through those doors. I'm here to talk about why I think that they stay. See, what I've learned in the short time of being a Toastmaster is that every club, big or small, has a sound. A sound a type of music that when you hear it, something deep inside of you just says, yeah, this is it. This is the place. I can do meetings here. I can come week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade, 60 years. And I know it's music for two reasons. One, that's why I keep coming back. I quit for a while, but I continually miss the sounds, the music, and Jerry blowing at my phone. <laughs> <laughs> but the other reason is, I love music. I love all kinds of music. I love jazz, blues, R&B. I really like Latin music. But when I need something, a type of music to truly stir my soul, I will always choose classical music. And although I enjoy the compositions of Bach, Beethoven, 
and especially Tchaikovsky. My all-time favorite composer is and shall always be Mozart. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. I don't remember where I was or even how old I was the first time I heard Mozart. But what I do remember is the sound. To me, it was just so beautiful. From the first moment I heard it, I knew that this was a sound that I had never heard, filled with such longing, such unfulfillable longing, that to me it, it sounded like the voice of God. Mozart was born <coughs> December 27, 1756, and he died January 5th, 1791. 35 years. That's all the time that the world had with him, 35 years. And yet, in that time, he created over 600 pieces of music. Here's a man who created his first concerto at the age of four. His first symphony at seven, a full-scale opera at the age of 12. 600 pieces of music, and many of them, such as the one you're listening to right now, was considered a masterpiece at the time that he wrote it. And yet, he died. Penniless, a pauper. He was buried in a potter's field in Vienna, Austria. But his music lives on. Over 200 years later, we are still talking about and writing about and watching movies about the concertos, about the operas, listening to the symphonies of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Ladies and gentlemen, because of Toastmasters, because of this club, I can humbly stand before you today and tell you with no hesitation whatsoever that I know exactly what Mozart felt like when he wrote his music. No, I haven't suddenly become a genius. And although I am now a distinguished Toastmaster, no, I haven't written hundreds and hundreds of speeches. And the ones that I have written, most of them, fine Jerry, none of them <laughs> will ever be considered masterpieces. But I know, I know what it feels like to take the music that lives inside of me, all of it, years and years and emotions and feelings and compress it down into something that only lasts for seven minutes and 30 seconds. I know what it feels like to take that thing that I created and have it resonate with people, people that I don't even know, people whose backgrounds and experiences are totally different than my own. I know what it feels like to have people come up to me after my speech is over because I said something that made their lives just a little bit brighter, just a little more beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, because of Toastmasters, I know what it feels like to create a sound that no one has ever heard. I know. And despite the fact that I have no musical talent whatsoever, I know what it feels like to create a symphony.
confused. Some of you are saying to yourself, wait a minute, Barry, wait a minute, hold on for a second. I know what a symphony is. A symphony is a piece of music played by men and women sitting in a grand concert hall, an orchestra. Yeah, that's true, but that's not the complete meaning of the word symphony. Webster's defines a symphony as a harmony of sound. Go home, look it up. A harmony of sound. In fact, Webster's second definition for the word symphony is a harmony of any kind. Of any kind. So while it's true a symphony is a harmony of musical instruments, it is also true that a symphony can be a harmony of thoughts, and a harmony of ideas, and a harmony of feelings, and a harmony of emotions, and a harmony of words expressed by one person or group of people. And that is what we're celebrating tonight. See, in Mozart's time period, if you wanted to be a classical composer of any note, pun intended, <laughs> there was only one place to go, Vienna. Vienna, Austria was the center of the classical music universe. Sure, there were grand concert halls and composers all over Europe, hundreds of them, and they all had violins and French horns and harpsichords. But, if you wanted to be the best, Beethoven, Brahms, Bach, and Mozart, there was only one place to go, Vienna, period. I found that the same is true for those of us who aspire to be truly great Toastmasters. Sure, there's clubs all over the district. Jerry told me the other day that there are 240 clubs in eight divisions, and there's 4,800 members. And they all have VPs of education and presidents and dues and treasurers, and they all meet once or twice a month. But if you aspire to be the best, Dick Starr, Bob Roman, my great O'Connor, Jeff Chadwick. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's only one thing you have to do. You have to become a member, or at least have the opportunity to speak at the Mount Prospect Toastmasters Club. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, for 60 years, this has been the center of the District 30 universe. Period. Some of you still don't get it. You don't get it. Some of you walked through that room and you saw tables nicely done and diamonds and plants and food. But it's so much more than that. Let me help you. Everybody, close your eyes. Close your eyes. And imagine yourself in a grand concert hall. And high above you are beautiful crystal chandeliers. And on the walls are exquisite tapestries and paintings. Now, see yourself on a stage. And in front of you are hundreds and hundreds of people, depending on the membership at the time, but hundreds and hundreds of people who have all come there for just one reason, a chance to hear your voice, a chance to hear your sound, a chance to hear the music that lives inside of your heart and inside of your mind. Now, open your eyes. See, I told you this is Carnegie Hall. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a room. No, this is a magical place. It is here in this place that you can be anything you want. It is here, in this place, that you can talk about that first kiss. It is here, in this place, that you can talk about the day that you find out that your mother really loved you. It is here, in this place, that you can talk about the day when you snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. Not once, not twice, but three times. And because, this is the best part, and because 
They meet in a church. <laughs> Your words can not only be expressed, but they are guaranteed to be heard. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you say? What do you say? Those of you who are members of the Mount Prospect Toastmasters Club, what do you say when someone asks you about being a Toastmaster? What do you say when someone asks you about this club, about this place? Yeah. You could say that this is the friendliest club in Chicago. That works. It's nice on the website. But if you have just a little bit more time, tell them that this is the place where dreams come true. If only for seven minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> tell them that this is the place with your visions, your passions, your ideas, tell them that this is the place where anything is possible. Members of the Mount Prospect Toastmasters Club, after 60 years, you have earned the right during your next open house to stand in the middle of the room Extend your hands as far as you can, look them directly in the eye, and tell them that this is the place where each and every meeting that you attend, you will have the opportunity to hear a harmony of sound. And if that still doesn't work, <laughs> if they still haven't joined, then tell them that this is the place. This is the chance. This is the time. This is the moment. This is the opportunity to do exactly what Mozart did over 200 years ago. A chance to take the music that lives inside of you and share it with the world. Ladies and gentlemen, for 60 years, this is and shall always be the place where you can finally, in that long last, learn how to create your symphony. Mm -hmm. Mr. Tosman. that we are in a church, pretty obvious to all of us. But did you know that this evening, we are spiritual beings having a Toastmaster experience? <laughs> did you know that? I had an opportunity to actually speak at a club. It's called Spiritually Speaking. And I was, I was presenting to the club and happened to think again, being in a spiritual place. And I thought about that. And a lot of us who have been in Toastmasters for a long, long time, it really is amazing because when we talk about or we think about our speech as a song, and what we like write down, as Barry said, are the lyrics, but how we say it, that's the music. That's the music. And when you think of the greatest speeches in the 20th and the 21st century, it's now what they said. It's how they said it. When Barry asked us to close our eyes and think of a symphony hall, when I close my eyes, or you close your eyes, and you listen to Martin Luther King, I have a dream. You hear the music. You hear the symphony. He doesn't have to be moving across the stage. For you techies out there, when Steve Jobs gave the 2005 Stanford commencement speech, you can close your eyes and listen to that speech. And if you were a young graduate at the time or still today, it's one of the ten greatest speeches in the history. So the symphony that we all get to sing and we get to practice, as Barry said, is not only Mount Prospect, but the other 243 clubs that are in District 30. 
And we've had the privilege in Mount Prospect, every step of the way since I joined Toastmasters was back in 2008. And actually I joined Mount Prospect Toastmasters with my son Kevin. He and I were the only father-son Toastmasters in District 30. And I think we still are, except he's not an active member right now to this day. But a lot of the people sitting in this room supported Mount Prospect, as Jeff said earlier, when we were at a very low ebb. When I joined Jeff, we were down to six members, seven members. And as we all know, there is an ebb and flow to every single club. But Mount Prospect has a long-standing history, and we've weathered the storm through six different decades, just like some of you who belong to some of the more mature clubs in the district. And we've had great mentors for the club because we're a very balanced club, so we have people at the very beginning, people in the middle, and then people farther along on their Toastmaster journey. But we couldn't have done it without all of you. And as Barry said, everyone who passed through that door and continues to come to Mount Prospect Toastmasters, and the magic does happen at Mount Prospect Toastmasters via Jeff Scanlon, who shared his magic with us this evening. And there's magic that happens in each and every one of our clubs. Because as we see someone that transforms their lives. I had an opportunity early on to hear Rudy Segovia and to hear him speak and compete against him. And now I have the privilege of cheering Rudy on along with Connor Kinnean going to the International Convention because Rudy will be competing at the in Kuala Lumpur International Speech Contest. And of course, Connor Kinnean will be representing District 30 in the International Speech Contest. But it just goes to show what a community we really are. And I think that when Dr. Smedley said, we learn best in moments of enjoyment, and I think that's really the spirit of Toastmasters, is that where else can we go and practice public speaking, talk about any topic or subject that we want to, and get constructive feedback? I disagree with him when he said constructive criticism, because we know that certainly has evolved. And the other thing, for you historians, does anyone know what year the first woman was allowed in Toastmasters? 1972-73. Helen Blanchard then became the first international president of Toastmasters, first female international president in 1985. But it took 49 years or more for women to be accepted in Toastmasters. And yet now I think Michelle 51, 52% of the district is women. women. And so we continue to attract talented professional women to Toastmasters. And I think that's a testament to how all the clubs in District 30 have evolved. We continue to provide quality educational sessions, phenomenal keynote speakers, and we all have the opportunity as part of Toastmasters to attend those type of sessions for a very nominal charge. And when someone outside of Toastmasters, and you tell them it's only $72 or less than $100 a year for all the value that they get out of it, it's like, really? I get all that for less than $100 a year? And Gina Coates and I made a presentation to GE, and she asked the human resource person what they thought Toastmasters should be worth. And Gina, what did they say, $1,500, $2,000 a year? And Gina was able to use her Toastmaster skills and persuade them to give us $500 <laughs> to do an event for GE Healthcare. But that's all, again, in the Toastmaster family. Before we convene this evening, let's take a real short break, and then I want to share with you some slides and walk you through the decade, the past six decades of Toastmasters from the 1950s, and Ruben, our master of music, is going to share with us music from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s. So let's take a quick 10-minute break, fellowship, and then we'll reconvene, and then we'll close out the meeting tonight. And before you do anything else, the raffle master is reminding me that if you haven't gotten your raffle tickets, please go over to the table, look during the break, and then when we come back, Diane will announce who the winners of the raffle are. Great 
gratitude and appreciation that the club wants you to know that we so, it's just so heartfelt that we could all come together this evening. Past members, present members, I didn't mention earlier, Kay Waddell was a Brendel, pardon my English. <laughs> Is there a grammarian in the house? <laughs> but Kay was a member of Mount Prospect Coastmasters. Now, I have to ask her, now Kay, were you really the president of Mount Prospect? Uh, for, for a couple of years. What year? Do you remember what year it was? <coughs> hundred years ago? Ninety-four? <laughs> Okay, 1994 when Mount Prospect had their 40th anniversary. So, Kay is a past president of Mount Prospect Toastmasters, so I needed to do a little bit more research. But thank my good friend, Michaeline, who reminded me as a good Toastmaster, Jerry, make sure you acknowledge past members, present members, etc. So, Kay, thank you for serving Mount Prospect Toastmasters. And thank you for being here this evening. So the thing you love most about Toastmasters, please leave that with us. We'll follow up with you and send you an email and certainly invite you to come back to Mount Prospect Toastmasters anytime. We do have a stage, if you didn't notice, behind the screen and the curtains here, so you have an opportunity to actually speak from the stage. We use this room for bigger events, and then our regular meeting room is right down the hallway. First United Methodist Church has been so generous and gracious with us as a club because we moved in here in 2005. Right, Dick? Six. six, I'm sorry, 2006. And they have just been really accommodating to the club. So anytime we ask them for something, they're, they're more than willing to help us. So, our raffle master, Diane, where are you at? She's inside. Come on out, raffle master. I know, and I was in the kitchen. Were you with Diana? Raffle. Oh, is it time? Yes, it's time. Oh, we can have fun. Yes, before we give them all the music, or Ruben closes out with all the great music from the different decades. Okay. We take the final walk down memory lane. I'm going to start right down at this end of the table. Okay. <coughs> this, by the way, let me die. Do your uh, Rick, Rick Westcott and I had an opportunity to hear Sam Glenn on Saturday at Harper College Toastmasters. It was an event called Inspire You. And he was phenomenal. Michelle, Donna, Joan, all the past district governors. If we have an opportunity to bring Sam Glenn to District 30 as a speaker, he was phenomenal. Is he free? <laughs> Don't you know in those messages there are no free speeches? <laughs> Just kidding. So we'll start with Sam Glenn's book, A Kick in the Attitude, and it is signed by Sam. So get your raffle. You put a ticket in here, and you have ticket 534-078. It's yours. Let's see. Virginia, all right. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Our second is the Speaker's Edge book. That has all the world champions, Patricia Crook, Darren LaCroix, Craig Valentine, Again, we have an anonymous ticket. The number is 534041. Yay! Gene! Okay. Gene is from Saturday Sunrise. All right. Thank you so much. They meet in Oak Park at 8 o'clock on Saturday mornings in Oak Park. Awesome club. That's why we have such big eyelids. <laughs> I, what, what's Saturday sunrise? What's the tagline? Tell them. Well, the sun is always shining to find us. There you go. Yay. Awesome. Right. <laughs> this book, Speeches That Changed the World, it's, it's a fabulous book. I also yes. have the CD. So. Speeches That Changed the World. And our lucky winner is 534011. 534. Joan, okay. We have 
a coffee thermos and a pretty cool UL bag. It's got all kinds of goodies in it. Look at it, even blinks. Yeah. Wow. Thermos goes along with that too? Wow. Yes, and the, the bag folds up to so it's about this big. Okay. So it can fit in your pocket. And, and the number it. is? So it might be a name this time. Might be a name, right. right. It's a number. <laughs> <laughs> the number is 534 That's me. 534. All right, Monique. Americana mugs. Because I actually have the same set. <laughs> this isn't my set. This is and the set. number is. <laughs> Linda Ritz. Linda. Okay. <laughs> Linda is our Vice President of Public Relations for Mount Prospect, and she does a wonderful job for us. Okay, who has dandelions and weeds if they need my help? This is a consult oh, by Diane. Yes. For those of you who don't know, Diane is a master gardener. She knows everything you'd ever want to know about composting. Well, maybe that's true. But not everything <laughs> I know about that. And worms. She loves her worms. I have about 7,500 pet worms. And Margaret, come to visit you. Margaret, okay. <laughs> when you were hoping she would win that, weren't you? I know. This is a cool towel that you can moisten. You can use it for playing golf, baseball, when you're going to a sports activities. It'll keep you cool for three or four hours. <laughs> and the winner is the ticket holder of 534063. Me. <laughs> Monique, again. Monique. Monique. Monique, you can use that when you write. Monique loves to ride her Harley, am I right? It's a Yamaha FC6. Okay. okay. It's a motorcycle. That's right. She loves riding her motorcycle. Connor Kaneen's book, Irish, and Glenn, it's autographed, correct? Yes. Did you get your tickets in? Make sure everybody got their chance at it. No name. The number is? 534. Zero two six five three four. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. <laughs> Might be a PG, PDG conspiracy going on here. <laughs> Paris. Oh, a picture of Paris. Paris. Okay, who's got their fingers crossed on this one? If it happens to be Tiffany Salenko. Tiffany! There you go. <laughs> All right. All right. Madam Raffle Master, what do we have now? We have a basket of. basket, which I was so busy, I wasn't able to put my name in for. So. Uh -oh. Oh, so Marguerite will give it to you. Next year. Okay, the next time we have a party like this. No name? 534 080. 534 080. All right. Since we've had so many no names, a little trivia for you. Wally Amos. Everybody know who Wally Amos is? Cookie Man. Famous Amos Cookies. When he sold the company to this large conglomerate food company, they wouldn't allow him to use his name anymore. So he said, okay, I can't use Wally Famous Amos. So he came up with the name No Naming. Mm. That's true. True story. He read his book. Yes. All right. All right. Bottle magic. Jeff is not going to tell you how he does this. But it is really incredible because the last time we had our open house, he donated one of his bottles. And this one is a little bit more complicated, he said, for him to do this. So he really gets a lot of money for these bottles. So for whoever wins this, you're really fortunate to, to win this tonight. It's a real treat. It's a one of a kind. One of a kind, that's right. It's a no-name 
So get out your numbers, 534119. 534119. 199, did you say? 
Is that it for the prizes? And our last prizes of the evening are the cheesecake. It's always nice to finish with something sweet, isn't it? Mm. Now, uh, Bob Roman has donated two, so we'll be pulling two names and numbers. This is whole world cheesecake, and those of you who tasted it, it is. Mm. Hopefully there's a piece left. Oh, uh, are you kidding me? Oh, wow. Nice try. 534-094. Woo! <laughs> right here. Okay, and the lucky person Last who's going to have to join a health club shortly after <laughs> is... Okay. You have one more prize to draw, you know, and that is a that is me taping an event for somebody who wins. It's a last-minute donation. Put them all together, Diane, and we'll draw. Like goldfish. Tim, the entire event. Well, give them the caveat, though. It's not all, but give them the event, you know, the, any the guidelines. Anytime, if you have like a speech or a small party or something that you want to do, no weddings, no funerals, but something that's a small event, maybe one, two, three hours, you want to tape live, have some DVDs made, I'll be more than happy to tape it for you. And, you know, and then it might require if we you have to do some editing or something for a, like a Christmas or a birthday gift or something, let me know and I'll give you a hand with it. So, okay. whenever you're ready. And the winner is. 534 127. 534 127. Let somebody else take it. <laughs> Seriously? Pull, pull again. Okay, pull again. Doctor's orders. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now I know your range. Let's your just. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the? Buy a lottery ticket. Right. <laughs> five three four one zero oh, five. Just go on. Five three four. One zero oh, five. One zero oh, five. Start looking. That's me. <laughs> Yay! All right, All right Ruben. Well, our music master, won. that's the last raffle prize, right? Okay. For me? Should I do the announcement first? About the second piece? Yes. Okay. <laughs> now we got to go date them. Hi, guys. We don't usually do um, advertisements in a Toastmasters meeting, but this one is really important. For those of you who know me, you know that for the last year or so I've been living what I'm calling my uh, gypsy adventure. And as part of what I've been doing is I, I became involved with a group of people who for the last 20 years have been doing everything in their power to feed the hungry in the northwest suburbs. The name of the organization now is Community Keepers, and it started as three friends who could not stand that food was going wasted when there are people who are starving in our community. So if you live in Harlington Heights or Mount Prospect, or Prospect Heights, Wheeling, Schaumburg, Palatine, DeKalb, DuPage County, King County, there are some unsung heroes who have blessed us this evening with the herbs and the centerpieces. Those all came through the Community Keepers organization. And they're probably not very well known because they're so busy doing the work that they never work at building the business. So you are all welcome to take any one of the herbs that you see in front of you. I'd like to get the word out about them because they are growing by leaps and bounds. I hate to say that their business has tripled in about the last three and a half years, and the needs have grown exponentially. So they are never paid for their food, whereas some of the other food uh, deposit in the Chicago Food Depository, the recipient programs and ministries, have to pay for the food and they deliver everything free, plus they also deal with perishables. So the families who are supported by this organization 
It's about, it's between four and 500 families a week. So it's time for them to get some community support. I put a little box on top of the piano. If you'd like to take an herb, please take one. If you'd like to take information, please do so. And go out and understand that there's a lot of people working in our community that we as Toastmasters can talk up and make sure that they get the help they need. Thank you. Okay, we're going to wrap this up. Let me... Marguerite was kind enough and Dick Storr was able to provide me with this information. There were originally 35 charter members of Mount Prospect Toastmasters. As I said earlier, it was chartered on May 3rd, 1954, and actually the club was organized February 1st, 1954, and I took you through you know, the various meeting places that, that Mount Prospect had. The first president of the club was J.G. Johnson, the vice president was M.L. Green, secretary was R.I. Karn Cross, treasurer was R.A. Peterson, Sergeant Arms was E.W. Nielsen, deputy governor at the time, uh, W.E. Peterson, and the educational chairman, which I'm assuming was the VPE, was Edward uh, Mielink. So from a beginning of 35 Toastmasters to many past and present members, take a look at this slideshow. You're going to recognize some of the people. Jeff, you can hit that other light if you would, please. Celebrating 60 years, 1954 to 2014. Dr. Smedley starts Toastmasters in 1924 in California. The building that they started in from a humble basement beginnings to now a world organization in 122 countries, 14,300 clubs, and over 300,000 members. Do you recognize either one of these individuals? Mr. Bob Roman. Did our computer just die, Jen? It died. Okay, I guess we won't take you through the rest of the slideshow. I can email it to everyone. Do we have a power source to hook it up to? No? Okay. Ruben, we can still play the music. Yeah, if you can crank back up the lights. We learned as Toastmasters to be adaptable and improvise, right, bury, and overcome. The Marine motto. Before I close this out, I want to call Glenn Reed, our president, up. Glenn Reed, President of Mount Prospect Toastmasters. Thank you, Jerry. And I just want to say thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you for, uh, to everyone who helped plan and carry out this event. It um, was a lot of work, but a great event. Really enjoyed it. Everybody uh, got to take home a few prizes, including myself. <laughs> so uh, stick around. There's still a lot of dessert back there and food, so help yourself take something home and mingle. We still have time here to just uh, stay around and stick around and talk to people and have a good time. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Again, remember to fill out these little slips and leave them with us. Excuse me? Yes. Yes. Let's have the past members of Mount Prospect Toastmasters stand, please, if you would, be recognized. Dick Storm, Dick Storm, the member of Chandler Toastmasters, and he was a member for a long time Mount Prospect Toastmasters. Kevin Chapman is a member of Displains Toastmasters. Marguerite is a member of Displains Toastmasters. Kay? She's a free agent. Kay's a free agent. Where's our VPM? Right here. I'll take Okay. All right. Application, <laughs> Tiffany. And then Romeo was a member of Mount Prospect Toastmasters and is a member of Windy City Toastmasters and Displains Toastmasters. Give them a hand, please. Okay. Marguerite said she has a bunch of newsletters that she can leave here and also... Those of you that didn't visit the back table, Keith Essek was kind enough to um, leave different manuals from, they go back how far, Keith? There's a variety. Variety. Uh, because one of the slides I was going to... One more thing. I, I'm sorry, I uh, was remiss and I forgot.
forgot to thank Jerry. Yeah. Our yeah. 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 And Jerry actually, he's personally invited probably about over half of the people here, so <laughs> if it wasn't for him, this party would not have happened. So thank you, Jerry. Yeah. Thank you. And also, I would like to thank Rubens yeah. Augusta for uh, the music. Great job. Jeff Hagen for the memory lane. Yes, yes. Yeah. for the magic. Yeah. And Barry Mixon for the inspirational you know, yeah. Yeah. And everybody who brought food. And everybody who brought food. Oh yeah. Yes. 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 And now can we please ask all of our current Mount Prospect Toastmaster members to please stand and be recognized. Everyone, everyone works so hard to put this together. I said to a lot of you that I talked to on the phone, I said tonight, I want it to be tonight a fellowship, fun, food, magic, music, prizes, surprises, and more importantly, just all of us, I think that in our esteemed past district governors, international director, could speak to it probably better than I can. I don't, I don't remember, at least in my time in Toastmasters, I'm sure a lot of them, where that many past dignitaries have come together in one place. When Barry talks about one place. And so we're so honored that they came tonight and helped us celebrate 60 years. We look forward to helping all of you who are celebrating your milestones in your club's history. So thank you from the bottom of my heart and the rest of the members of Mount Prospect Toastmasters Club 1500 for helping us celebrate this momentous occasion this evening. Godspeed and have a fantastic rest of your week.